This is going to be our fourth and final installment in our variant calling workflow series where we've been working on a uh, set of E. coli sequencing samples, some Illumina paired in sequencing, and we've been cleaning those up and now have aligned those to a reference genome. So again, this is a companion to the data carpentry workshop, data wrangling and processing for genomics. This is uh, the part where we're going to work on uh, converting our SAM files that we obtained from BWA align or read mapping last time, uh, converting those to VCF files and then viewing those. So in this part, I want to take a little bit of time to try and make this a little bit reusable, and we'll think about how to make this repeatable for all three of our samples. For now, I'm going to do that by declaring a variable that I'm calling SRA and giving the SRA ID number for one of our samples here. And then we're going to use that, we're going to reference that number in our code, uh, in our variant calling workflow here to uh, to refer to that number to give us file names. Uh, that way, when we go back to redo this for the other samples, all we have to do is change this SRA number here. All right, so first up, I wanna outline what it is that we're trying to do here, a couple of our steps. Okay, so uh, here's a short breakdown of what we're gonna try and do here. We're gonna use SAM tools to convert our SAM to BAM formats, uh, sort the BAM file by genomic coordinates, and then check some of our alignment stats with uh, the flag stat command in SAM tools. Then we'll move on to BCF tools because uh, we uh, will be able to convert that BAM file to a BCF file, binary variant calling format. Uh, with the use of mpileup, which is also going to help us calculate the coverage. So at that point, we'll have coverage and uh, variant proportions at each genomic position. And then we'll call our variants. Uh, so that would be the BCF tools call module. And then last but not least, we'll use VCF utils to filter our variants uh, to provide us with the best candidates that we can. Uh, then we will move on to IGV. Uh, so this is gonna create VCF files and we'll move on to loading those and checking those out in IGV. Okay, so we'll do these one at a time. It take a little bit of time to run. I'll cut that part out, but uh, it should take a few minutes when I run each of these for you. All right, first up, uh, we've got SAM tools view, which is going to convert to a BAM file. That's the dash B flag right here. So that's uh, dash B is uh, convert to a BAM file. Uh, we're passing in this SAM file and we are passing out, we're redirecting the output to a BAM file. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I better run this first, huh? Okay, and once again, I have my uh, my files in a, res a, a folder called results process, and I have a SAM, BAM, and VCF folder inside of there. So that's why we're working here with these relative paths, results process, slash SAM, slash, and then a file name. When that finishes, we're gonna move on to our sorting. We're gonna use SAM tools sort, uh, to define an output file, which we're gonna call uh, the SRA number dot aligned dot sorted dot BAM. Uh, that way we, we know a little bit about what's in there and can hopefully keep track. Uh, better than overwriting SRA dot BAM. And then, uh, right, that's just our input file here. We will sort. Well, that's going, I'll go ahead and set up our flag stack command. This doesn't do anything to the BAM file, but it is gonna give us some stats about the BAM file. It gives us a chance to check out how well we've done and what our data have given us up to this point. So Flagstack gives us information about how our reads have mapped. Uh, in this one, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, almost all of our read 
reads in the data set, all 2.5 million of those maps, 99.96%. That's a really good sign. If you have some contamination, maybe not all your reads came from that genome, that number could be lower and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, just to be sure that you still have enough mapping to answer the question that you wanna answer. Next up, we have, again, properly paired. So we don't have uh, issues with our reads uh, aligning, but not in the right order. Uh, 97.8 or 97.9% of those passed. So I'm happy with that. That's a nice, clean data set. Uh, all of our reads map to the right genome and in the right order. So I'm pretty confident in what we're gonna get out of this. Okay, let's go on and uh, calculate or convert to, I guess calculate, yeah. Uh, let's go on now and uh, convert these alignments to our variant calling. So first up is mpile up in, uh, no. First up is mpile up with BCF tools. So here we are, mpile up uh, output type B, that's gonna convert to the compressed binary BCF format that's gonna save on some space. And uh, then our output should be name.bcf. Our backslash here, let's just keep going on the next line because this is a long one. Uh, dash F is to the reference genome. That's our path to the reference genome, E. coli rel606.fasta. And uh, then space and our input file. That goes back to our align.sorted.bam file that we got up here after sorting. So I'm gonna run that. While that's running, the next command we're gonna run is BCF call, BCF tools call, I should say. Uh, we have to set a ploidy flag here to one. Uh, if, uh, if we were dealing with a, a diploid organism, we would set that to two or polyploidy, we might have to deal with uh, more chromosomes here. The e. coli, we only have one chromosome. That's gonna be important for deciding which allele, which, uh, which variant at each position is, um, is actually present. If uh, we had two chromosomes, we might expect some sites to be heterozygous and approach 50% of two different bases. But here in E. coli, there's only one chromosome. So we're going with uh, something like majority rules, where the one that appears the most at each position is the base that is called, is the variant that's called. Okay, so now that uh, pileup is run, let's run BCF tools call. And that's gonna look at each site and call and make a call for the variant. That's very fast now that we're sorted and we have our pile up calculated. And last but not least, we will run the VCF utils filter. Okay, now in, that gives us um, in our VCF folder, that gives us uh, a couple of different files. We had uh, SRA raw, uh, which we got, uh, sorry, that should have been up here. Uh, from mpile up, we had the uh, SRA number underscore raw dot BCF. We converted that to SRA underscore variance dot VCF. And then after we filtered, we converted that to, uh, here's our redirect, redirected to SRA final variance. And uh, that's gonna be the one that we want to view in IGV now. All right, so this is a pretty good workflow here. It's more reproducible now. So we've got our SRA number uh, defined in a variable up here. Uh, however, I think we can do one better real quick. I'm gonna show you to put this in a loop by declaring an array. So let's just, uh, oops, that's not it, okay. <laughs> For that, we're gonna use declare dash a, lowercase sra to refer to the array here. And then uh, I'm gonna copy in our three ID numbers so that I get it right. All right, you can put as many as you want to in here. And then instead of 
referring, um, right, just changing that and running it three different times, we're going to run for capital SRA in lowercase SR, or sorry, in our reference to SRA. All right, then we're going to do all of these operations and then we'll be done. All right, so I'm gonna start that running and we'll go off and check IGV. Uh, I've already done all of the alignments so we'll be able to pull those up and check out what we're finding. Oh, oh yeah, only one bracket. This isn't our people. The at symbol wouldn't work in R anyways. There we go. And we're off to the races. So we are now calculating variance for all three of our data sets. And we can follow along. We've got SAM tools running here. Uh, we could watch top and see how that goes. But for the sake of performance, we're going to skip on over to IGV. All right, here we are in IGV accessed uh, through a web browser. So it's a little bit clunky. You could install IGV on your laptop and download your data set. That's the point of another video. So I have uh, I've gone ahead and loaded the reference genome here, E. coli rel 606.fasta, and you can see it's genomic coordinates, all 4.6 million nucleotides long. We would load a new genome from file right here but that's already up for us. So let's go ahead and load from file our variant. So we're gonna do, uh, let's do, shoot, what's the order? Um, <laughs> I think we wanna do four, four first, and then we're gonna do six, three, and last but not least, six, six, six. There we go. And look at that. We have quite the difference in variance between these genomes. 4.4 uh, has relatively few differences from the E. coli rel 606, somewhat more in the 863, and a lot of variants called in the 866 genome. So what does that all mean? Uh, if we go back to the beginning, uh, and if you go and check out the background and metadata section of the data carpentry workshop, you'll find that these three sequencing samples come from three different generations in the same lineage. So uh, what's happening here is uh, the first one is uh, only 5,000 generations into the experiment. So 5,000 generations from the reference. And this one is uh, 15,000. So the 863 is 15,000 generations. And the 866 is 50,000 generations. And there's lots of cool biology that goes along with this. But we're accumulating variation over time. Uh, and then we see this uh, uh, explosion of variants after about 30,000 generations. So this one's 50,000. But after about 30,000, they say, uh, in some lineages, we get this explosive variation. And we can see that now. So we could go through and investigate. We could see, um, yeah, there's there's four variants here between the first two that are the same. What are, what are at these sites? Are these falling in genes? Are they changing anything about the genome? Uh, this opens up a whole new line of investigation for your project. But there it is. That's the cap on our variant calling workflow. We've gone from raw data to uh, something we can start to explore and start to learn about the genome in uh, that we've been sequencing for, uh, with our raw data here. All right, that's it for now.